Brothers and sisters, there's so much more that I need to share with you about my experience there and the thoughts that occurred to me uh, while I was there uh, that, uh, and even after I come back, just rethinking the whole process. But time does not permit for all of that. But I'll give you some quick highlights about some of the things uh, that, that you, we should be aware of. Th there are changes happening in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and and the, the changes are many, and uh, they're not all comprehensible to me, but here are some of the things I noticed. Suddenly, a 5% uh, uh, GST was added uh, to all purchases uh, starting this, uh, this year, to the extent that even the SIM card that I had bought, having so much credit, uh, January 1st, immediately I got a notification saying that your credits have been reduced by the 5% for GST. So it's affecting everything. You talk to people on the street and the drivers who drive you around and, and you get a very negative impression of how people are faring in that country under its laws, its regulations, and the way that some people are discriminated against. You hear news items about scholars of Islam being detained, being jailed, and even disappearing suddenly. Uh, th there are changes that we do not fully understand. Uh, we know that uh, the, the women will be allowed to drive uh, starting this year, and that is something positive. I, I look forward to that. I I've, I've waited for that for, for a long time. But there are other changes that I'm not so positive about, that I, I don't quite understand uh, how, how to uh, perceive. Cinemas will be open after they have been closed for such a long time. And one of the reasons for that is that uh, not only is there a, a 2030 vision, and uh, they want by the year 2030 that certain changes uh, should be implemented uh, in Saudi Arabia, uh, but there is also the reality on the ground. Did you know that, that uh, those in, uh, people in Saudi Arabia wanting to watch movies, they fly over to Bahrain where they can watch the movies and come back in a day? And people do this at the cost of 1,200 rials per person for a day trip to go and watch the latest movies as soon as they are released and they come out in the movie theaters in Bahrain. Now you might think, okay, Bahrain is a country, they have their citizens, they have their movie theaters, and uh, you know most of the people who go to the movie theaters in Bahrain must be Bahrainis, right? But it turns out that what I read on the internet this morning is that 93% of the tickets, the movie tickets that are sold in Bahrain are sold to Saudis. And that's got me thinking, you know, people are leaving uh, all of the comforts of this world and the luxuries and all of the movies and the Netflix and everything. And they're going on a flight to Saudi Arabia because they want to go make uh, Hajj and Umrah. They want to visit these holy places. They want to play and pray in Masjid al-Haram and in Masjid al-Nabawi. And the people who are there, they want to fly to Bahrain to go and watch a movie. I'm not saying that something is wrong with watching movies. I, I understand the idea that people have to be holistic and there's so many different areas of life. And yes, we need recreation, we need some entertainment, and so on, halal ones. But to that extent? And now, one of the changes we notice is that it's been declared that uh, some 50 islands in the Red Sea, uh, part of Saudi Arabia, uh, will now be relegated to what is referred to as the Red Sea Resort. And we'll have to see like the full fruition of that, because this is an area that's bigger, uh, bigger than Belgium, and uh, many times uh, larger than uh, the, the Palm Beach uh, Jumeirah um, uh, resort that is there in, in Dubai. So what will this be for? This will cater to non-Muslim tourists. And, and it is uh, mentioned that uh, uh, because it is catering for them, uh, and, and to attract them from other such resorts from other parts of the world, they will have to be provided with all of the comforts and amenities and luxuries uh, to fit the lifestyle that they're already accustomed to. To the extent that I've read some news articles about this, uh, this is not official, but many news articles are saying this, that uh, uh, women will be there you know, as they are dressed in on any other beach in some other part of the world. So we're asking then, aren't you going from one extreme to the next? Okay, one extreme is that you cover the woman up so much, we cannot even see her eyes. Now the other extreme is that you're going to have this kind of maximum exposure on, on, on your beaches, on your land. The land that Muslims all over the world are looking up towards and they're thinking, this is where we'll get our Islam from. 
Muslims have to wake up. First of all, we have to find a balanced path that, that is sustainable and that we can uh, remain on firmly with istiqamah. And that it should be a balanced path that we do not waver from. It's not that we go to one extreme and then we find that, okay, we can't live by that extreme. And then we go now to the next extreme. What is the next extreme? Where Muslims in Muslim lands are looking to the West and they want to become more Western than the Westerners themselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect the holy lands. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect the Muslims all over the world. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will use the sacred centers of Islam as the starting point from which His blessings and His guidance are distributed throughout the entire world. Ya Rabb, we ask you to use us as instruments for conveying the message of your religion to the rest of the world. Ya Rabb. Wa akhir da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.